Juan? So, <laughs> uh, kind of wrapping up some of my observations about Dr. Reiswick, I have been talking to somebody who worked with him when he was at Fulton, when he did what was called the voluntary redesign. One of the things that she said really struck me was that he looks to empower people to sort of carry through the change. He is not somebody that wants to carry all that weight on his shoulders, which will be interesting to see if he can pull that off with now a 60,000 student, 8,000 employee system. She said one thing I thought was interesting, when he sees people doing small things well, he puts them in charge of big things. So maybe that will be kind of his leadership style that we see going forward. So Don and Susan, what big things do you think will be some of the challenges that he faces right away? Susan, we'll start with you. Yeah, well, the good news is he's local. He was an insider, people know him. And I think in Knoxville, we always seem more comfortable with people that we know. And so I think that was a big plus for him. He obviously had a great interview. He talked about team building. Um, and that was something that seemed to go well with some of the school board members. He also talked about having a, already having a relationship with the mayors and with the UT leadership, which certainly can be helpful um, as, as he talked about trying to, you know, um, use some pro integrate some programs with the university and, and use them as well. Um, I, think, I think he's high energy. Um, I think he has been in the school system. He's taught school. And um, I, I just think the students are really going to respond to him as well as the, the staff and the faculty. So um, I'm wishing him the best, and uh, I, I really feel good about his appointment. Don, your thoughts? Well, uh, the one thing I'll disagree with Susan on is uh, uh, your comment that he's an insider and that's good. And while I don't really care if someone's an insider or an outsider, I want to hire the best person. And he very well may be the best person. There are There's a big segment of this community that are tired of the insiders, so to speak. And I think he'll have to overcome that stigma with some. Not all, but with some. But uh, he certainly is qualified and does have a familiarity with the system that's unique. This is the hardest time, in my opinion, to be a superintendent of a school system in Tennessee. We've got a legislature who's trying to legislate the curriculum by way of everything from LG, LGBTQ issues to critical race theory, which doesn't even exist, to what you can say, what you can do. And, and then we've got school security issues going on. And we're post pandemic trying to come back and bring scores up. This is an incredibly challenging time with sort of a multifaceted uh, set of problems that that the superintendent and those underneath him are going to have to address. And it's going to be, you know, the, the boy with his finger in the dike trying to plug each hole. And, and it's going to be really challenging and really take some time. This is not a one year fix. This is a 10 year fix, in my opinion. Don, only 30 seconds well, left. How significant was the move by County Commission to allow the Knox County School Board to hire outside counsel when it comes to the mask mandate? It would be foolish for the school board to hire outside counsel. They have competent people arguing it now from the county law department. Judge Ronnie Greer has put down a virtual bulletproof opinion. It, the, the, the state AG can't do it. Sure as heck, outside counsel won't do it. Waste Don, Susan, as always, we appreciate the perspective. We hope you join us next week. We'll have the TBI director on Inside Tennessee, David Roush, the former chief of Knoxville Police. Have a great weekend.